Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we're going to explore the fantastic game of Space Engineers. Survival is an option. Today we're going to start out in survival mode in the star system and create our own custom game. To make things easier for first starting off, we're going to choose the Earth-like drop pod, and we're going to drop on the Earth-like planet. It has an interesting view for sure. There's usually mountainous areas around. It's kind of rocky, but it is a great climate to start out because you don't have to worry about your power running low very quickly, and you can easily find resources and ice. And touchdown. Luckily on this go around, we didn't flip or anything. If you end up in a rocky area, you may actually end up tumbling down the hills. What I usually start out with is kind of surveying around, making sure my equipment is paired up. And then I go out scouting for a decent place that's away from my base so I can begin harvesting some stones. When digging, make sure that you dig at an angle, so that way you can get back up. The Earth-like planet's gravity is merciless against your hydrogen pack. Inventory full. Now just place your stone inside the survival kit. Select a few of the bags on the side, and it'll actually start breaking down the material into nickel, silicone, and iron. It's important to collect enough materials first before you actually begin any build. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and forth getting more and more. I set my inventory levels to maximum under the advanced settings. This way, when I carry the ore back, I can max it out at almost 4,000 kilograms. That should do it for now. I'm just going to let it run for a while while I survey the land, maybe f try to figure out where we should start out this base. It really only takes a couple of steel pieces to initiate a base. I'm purposely going to use a couple of extra blocks just so I can support a windmill and the top of it. And then maybe create a small platform or go directly for a basic refiner. Now the basic refinery you can access from both sides of it. So you can access your inventory from the front or the back. So usually what I do is I leave one side exposed and then the other side I will connect other components to it, such as an assembler. The windmill is the only other alternative between that and solar panels in order to power your station when you first start out. It doesn't take too much material to build one, but when we're going to go ahead and build the basic refiner, a basic assembler, a couple of conveyors, we're going to need quite a bit of resources, so that's why I went ahead and grabbed extra while I could. Now the way you place this windmill is you want it high enough where it's away from any other obstructions. It definitely affects how much power the windmill can create 
depending on where it's located. So if you're in a mountainous area, make sure that you're not too close to the mountain or you're not in a valley of some sort. Otherwise, you're probably only gonna get about 100 kilowatts at the most. The basic refiner needs about 280 to 300 on average in order to break down the ore. It's very important to put your windmill at the most optimal location. To unlock more blocks, I built a medium cargo container, and that gives me the ability to create the conveyor. Which I automatically put in my number five spot, and I usually never move that. It also allows us to be able to build the basic assembler. And you'll notice as we build more items, our progression increases and we can build even more items. For instance, we didn't build the basic assembler first. We couldn't build a version of the more advanced assembler later. Since I don't have the conveyor built yet, I decided to transfer manually all the materials I had collected out of my basic refinery. Now with it completed, they should automatically transfer. Not looking too bad so far. Probably going to need more materials. Next, we're going to try to build a drill set. So that way we don't have to keep doing this manually. It does take a long time to manually drill out the earth. It is going to take several, several loads of stone broken down in order to create a piston setup with a drill. I mean, you could go simpler than what I have done by just using one piston, one drill, and drill into the side of a hill if you want. But in this case, I'm kind of planning a longer term. So I'm going to build a piston vertically, and then a piston horizontally, and then drill vertically downward. That way we can continue to drill and drill and mine more ore without having to continuously rebuild and modify our system. Pistons are pretty easy to use. They have a basic control that allows you to get to the terminal. You can set the height and the rate in which they move. Yeah, better add one of these diagonal blocks or I'll never be able to get out of here if I run out of hydrogen. There, one piston done. Now I'll just need to make a step over here so I can connect a conveyor to it. And there you have it. Remove this block over here. If you don't remove the block, then it could inhibit your piston from moving. And I'm just going to mount this horizontal piston like this. I think that should be good. I think I'm only going to use one on here. You can use as many as you want, but I find if you go more than two, when they're fully extended, they kind of get all woggly. They bounce up and down basically whenever you turn a drill on. There we go. Now I just need a conveyor to connect the drill to. The drills can also be connected on the side, but since we're going to add a lower piston, we're going to add a conveyor first, and then we're going to put a piston, and then the drill. 
Hmm, doesn't look like there's going to be enough space, so I'm probably going to have to raise this lower piston up in order to fit the drill. Always make sure that your power doesn't run out, so periodically make a stop over at your survival pod and potentially recharge before you go to the next project. I've made this mistake a time or two and I've cut it really close to running out. Alright, so we finally got that last piston down. I raised the vertical piston by about 4 meters and it still doesn't quite fit or maybe I need some steel for it. Alright, there we go. It was just I was missing steel. And there you have it. That is a basic setup. Now I'll show you how to operate this thing. It's actually quite simple. What I do is on the vertical piston, if I already have it raised, I will set the minimum to two and a half meters. I usually don't try to go any farther than two and a half meters because it's hard on the drill head. Some people go to three meters, but then anything after that may actually damage your drill head over time. You just hit the reverse button and it'll drop back down. And as you can see, now it's tearing up the ground. The second piston I created is the orange color. You could just relabel the pistons to make it easier on you, but I find when you're first starting out, you only have three pistons. It doesn't matter that much. Now I'm going to build a basic habitat by just placing a few steel blocks. And then I'm going to add walls to it. Maybe a few windows and a control seat. Control seats are very important in this game because they allow you to recharge your suit without having to go back over to your respawn pod or your survival pod every single time. This is gonna be a very crude habitat and there's not gonna be much to it. It's pretty basic, just square. You can be more creative when you're first starting out, but mind you, it does actually consume quite a bit of material. So you really have to weigh the benefits and the cost in this. This is an interior wall, and you need to build one of these in order to build any of the windows. Otherwise, they won't activate in your progression screen. There we go. Just a couple of 2 by one windows here. They're pretty easy to build. They only take bulletproof glass and a few girders, depending on the size that you're creating. Hmm. Well, I guess I can't really do this control C either unless I do a landing gear. Landing gear, once they're built, unlocks a lot of different items that you will need for building a ship. And one of them is the control seat. Completely forgot about that earlier. All right. So now that we're done with that, we just build the control seat. The control seat allows you to basically control your entire station. You can either use a control seat, you can use a fighter cockpit, you can use a utility cockpit, whichever you prefer. It doesn't really matter. They'll all be able to do the same thing as long as they're connected to the station grid. Yep, now we're just testing it out. Looks pretty good. Well, thanks for watching, and if you have any comments, please add them so other people can benefit from watching.